I'm not gonna be using these applicators. I've been so bad recently and like there's like makeup that I just wanna hate. Hi, Mal Pals and New Pals. Today's video is my Sephora VIB sale haul. And the reason why I have no makeup on right now is I want to do a first impressions of everything that I purchased. There's a couple things I've already tried, such as the hair products. So we're gonna get into those first. And then we're gonna get into the makeup products I ended up purchasing. One of these products is super disappointing and I just can't even believe it, but we'll get into that. The first thing though I wanna talk about is something that I can't believe might replace my Kevin Murphy do over spray. It is the IGK Beach Club Volumizing Texture Spray. I did not use any of my other texturizing sprays today on my hair after I styled. Usually I will do my Kevin Murphy do over a shine spray after and then a hair spray. Today I only have the IGK Beach Club Volumizing Texture Spray in this and I have to tell you something that might be a little embarrassing. When I sprayed this in my hair after styling it before I started filming, I got a little emotional because it smelled like it smelled like the beach, like the beach. Like I'm talking about like the ocean plus like sunscreen that I wore as a kid and I grew up going to the beach with my dad who has now passed away. And so it was just like really a flood of like good memories. So, and then it's, of course it's kind of sad, but so this, I love IGK styling products. This one though, I think by far has been my favorite that I've tried. I've tried a few of their hair masks, conditioners, spirulina spray. This is great though. Uh, it has hydrating glycerin and it's salt free, which I really like. I do like salt sprays. They do feel a little drying. You get more of a gritty kind of dirty hair look with a salt spray and it smells so good. It performs so well. So I'll just spray a little more in my ends. This is how I like to spray in my texturizing sprays. Don't mind me if I start crying because it smells like my beach bag as a kid. Like literally my first word was bird because I was looking at a seagull on the beach. Okay, so it's a little, uh, it's a little, what is that called? Nostalgic. If you could bottle up just like the best beach vacation memory or like future beach vacation with a texturizing spray, it would be the IGK Beach Club Volumizing Texture Spray. Next is a product that I like. It's something I've had my eye on for quite some time. It is the Crown Affair The Oil Oil. I have tried this oil in my wet hair as like a treatment. I applied uh, one day like kind of like an Olaplex bun. I, I have always done an Olaplex bun like where I will put Olaplex in my hair and wear it as a tight bun and like go out like where it looks good. It's like a sleek bun, right? So I did that with this. It's also great for dry hair. I use about two drops for my entire head of hair when it's wet. I really do enjoy this. The scent is wonderful. Um, I need to actually pull up what the ingredients are because it doesn't have it on the bottle. And now Crown Affair has shampoos and conditioners. When I first started following them on Instagram a couple years ago, it was just the combs, which we'll get into. So it says it's good for frizz all hair types uh, and heat protection. It helps with split ends damage. It has a baki oil, seed oil, deeply moisturizes, adds shine, strength to strands without weight. Meadow foam seed oil, a heat protectant and emollient that softens and hydrates hair. I'm not saying that this is going to replace my Olaplex number no. seven oil, but it is right up there with it. I love this. It's a little bit heavier than the Olaplex oil, but it doesn't weigh the hair down. You will feel it in your hair. It doesn't disappear like the hairdresser's invisible primer oil or the Olaplex number no. seven oil. It You feel it in your hair, but it's not heavy. I'll put this and I'll put it just through the ends here. I like the, my ends to be texturized, but just so you could see kind of the effect it gives. It kind of smooths those ends that might want to kind of stick out a little too much, which I actually don't mind, but it is very lightweight. It doesn't make my hair feel greasy or anything. And I'm really glad that I picked this up during the sale because it's $40. It's something that I've had on my list for quite some time. I just haven't wanted to spend the money on it because I buy so many other hair oils, but she's gonna go up in the favorite shelf with the IGK Beach Club uh, 
volumizing texture spray. Now here's the big disappointment, okay? It is the Crown Affair number 002 comb. First of all, when I placed my order, I ordered the other, um, like the tortoiseshell one. It was like a stripey kind of look, but they sent me this one. I don't know, it doesn't matter. Both of them are pretty to me. Both of them are aesthetic. It is a wide tooth comb for detangling in the shower and also to brush through waves or anything like that. So here's a little backstory on this. I purchased the 001 style without the handle. It's a bit smaller for my mom. My mom was a hairstylist when she was younger. So the love of hairstyling and hairstyling tools, just like it's in my blood. And she really loves her comb. So I decided to finally splurge on myself and get myself this comb. I've wanted it for a couple years, but I've given them as gifts, not just to my mom, but other people, and they love them. I am so disappointed at this. I have very fine, naturally curly hair, and this, even in the shower, it will not get through the ends of my hair. And my hair is healthy. I, my hair, like of course, I color treat it and things like that but I've never had a comb not be able to go through my hair. I take really good care of my hair. I use really good hair products. I make sure that nothing like that is the issue when it comes to um, combs. So this one will be going back. I'm very disappointed. Let me know your thoughts. It feels very just like if I saw this at the drugstore under Revlon's name, I'd be like, oh, this is just a good in shower brush. But the fact that this is $40 and it's very lightweight, like I feel like my mom's comb that I gave her as a gift was, was just like heavier in the hand, which is important to me, like feeling because I have arthritis and like the grip of it. This just isn't doing it for me and I am returning this. I'm a little disappointed. You guys let me know, have you tried it? and what your thoughts are. Maybe there's something I'm missing. I'm not saying I'm correct all the time, but I feel like if this comb can't get through fine hair like mine, I can't imagine it getting it through other people's hair at all. Okay, now it is time to try a new foundation. A lot of you have requested me to try, so I'm very excited to get on with this makeup portion. I got two different foundations, but I feel like this is the most pressing one. I got this in two shades. I got the Kosas Skin Revealer Skin Improving Foundation with SPF 25. I got them in the shades Light Medium Neutral 200 and Light Neutral Warm 130. Okay, I blindly picked these out, so I haven't even opened the box. I think the, the lighter one is probably gonna be it. Oh, I don't know. Let's test these. Okay, so first of all, I like the packaging. It's glass, it's got a fun little yellow top. A lot of people love this. It says it's, it makes your skin visibly pumped, alive, and protected hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, peptide, squalene, pro vitamin B5, arnica. Ooh, Arnica, which is, uh, it relieves swelling and bruising, actually, caffeine and Artemisia flower. Light, medium, 200. I am self-tanned right now. Here, let's get closer. So this is light, medium, 200, which I think might be the match. And then the other one, that I got is Light Neutral Warm 130, okay? Hmm. I mean, in real life, I feel like we're going with the darker one. All right, we're gonna go for the darker one in Light Medium 200. I think this might be a little more my undertone as well. Now I know a lot of people apply this with their fingers, but I just can't. I'm using the Huda Beauty sponge. I've been liking this sponge, honestly, a little more than my AOA sponge that we're using this. Okay, so the scent right off the bat, I do have to say it is very floral. I am interested that this has Arnica in it. Oh, wow. Okay, whoa, I got distracted, I'm sorry. This looks really pretty already. I'm self-tan, but some of it has like gone down a little bit, a little bit has washed off. I've had a few showers since applying. Upon first application, I am not seeing this pick up on any 
dryness, which is shocking. I've been kind of crying a lot today and um, that can kick up a lot of redness and irritation. Medium natural dreamy finish. Oh, I think they nailed that. I hope this doesn't break me out. It has SPF in it. Sometimes my skin can be a little sensitive to certain SPFs and I hope also that um, whatever is smelling very floral doesn't break me out. So let's get a little up close. Overall, I feel like my skin looks very nice. It looks natural and glowy. It's kind of reminding me of the Makeup Forever HD skin foundation, but just a touch glowier. I wanted to go with products that I feel like are really on trend right now and give them a go. I have actually never tried Milk Makeup's bronzers, and this is the new Bionic Bronzer in Shape Shift. I felt like this might be Okay, I feel like this uh, might be a really nice cross between um, bronzer and contour for me. Okay. Not like anybody else has to work on the weekends. Anyway, this is the packaging. Hey, okay, this is the shade Shape Shift. Oh wow, this is very liquidy. It looks like melted chocolate. Okay, so I'm just gonna, oh wow, that's interesting. It, it's kind of tacky. So I'm just gonna apply this like I would my other bronzer. I really wanna try different cream bronzers other than my M Cosmetics So Soft bronzers cause I know those will always be a staple, but I need to like get out of my comfort zone a little bit sometimes with makeup because otherwise I won't discover other fun products. Upon application, I feel like this is definitely warming up my skin. I feel like Shape Shift is definitely a really good bronze shade for me. I believe it's the second darkest shade. It has no scent. Let me know if you guys have tried these. They also have highlighters, but I bought a different highlighter from a brand I've never tried, and we're about to use that, and I'm very excited about it. I know my summer is gonna be super busy, so I'm really attracted to products that are just easy to use and are gonna give me a really nice cohesive look without too much work involved. Okay, so far, I really like the shade Shape Shift. Very nice and glowy. I like a glowy bronzer. This for sure right now is going in the keep pile. Of course, I'll update you guys in the blog portion once this goes up if I've decided if anything's broken me out or anything like that will be returning. Brand new, the Dior Backstage Flash Perfect Concealer. So it's supposed to de-puff and help under eyes. It's supposed to give you radiance, micro pigments visibly blur infections with, and brighten the complexion, make the eyes pop. I purchased the shade Zero In. It's the same shade that I have in the Dior Backstage Powder. Packaging is very interesting. It's just like a skinnier version of the Backstage Foundation, which I've yet to try. Oh, wow. This is an actual very interesting applicator. This is a brush. So I'm just going to... Oh, wow, that's nice. You can get very close to the under. I have like puffiness right underneath my eyes. I'm gonna apply it to the tops of my lids for a little deep puffing. No strange scent. Interesting that it's waterproof and all of these other things. I'm gonna use the flat side of this beauty sponge. Okay, my eyes are burning a little bit, but I don't know if that's because I've been crying. It says full coverage. I might have just applied it a little too much, but I'm like, oh, my dark circles are so bad today. Oh wow, that looks like skin. We'll go ahead and set this with the Dior Backstage Powder as well because I think it'll look nice. So I like using concealer that's uh, a couple shades lighter or one shade lighter than my actual foundation because I just feel like it really brightens the area and it gives my face dimension. I know it's not everybody's thing, but it's definitely mine. Do you guys see this? This is without setting it. I'm about to set it with the Dior powder because I feel like, you know, it's the same line and it'll give it a really good chance. This is really pretty. I'm going to set my under eyes. I feel like they look really gorgeous and really moisturized. I'm gonna set my eyes with the Dior Backstage Powder No Powder. 
And I'm only gonna set my under eyes because I wanna see how this uh, Kosas foundation does. We have the Huda Beauty new cheek tints, one in Perky Peach and one in Rebel Red. I'm gonna try to drape with these before I put my brows on. It says waterproof, buildable color, buildable color, buildable color, vibrantly sheer and waterproof. I should have put my concealer on after these. I just got so excited about this concealer, which is also going in the keep pile for now. So I wanna do a little draping action with these. This is Rebel Red. So these are sheer, ooh, oh, this is like very nostalgic too. I'm gonna try not to cry. But this has like a really nice silicone-y, grippy feel. So I'm just gonna drape right here. Take my sponge. Bring that kind of towards the back of my cheeks. Oh, this is nice and sheer, so you don't have to get um, a little afraid of how deep the shades are. I like this already. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply that underneath my brow to give myself some life. I'm gonna stop right here because then I'm gonna go in with the other blush shade. Ooh, this is pretty. This is the shade Perky Peach. It looks like it has some shimmer in it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go right on the apples of the cheeks. Ooh, that feels like that's already giving my uh, face some life. I've been loving using darker and lighter shades of blushes recently. Oh God, look at the dewiness of these. Oh, keep, keep, keep. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. That is a pretty draping combo. If you guys haven't tried, like almost like contour with blush, but really draping darker to lighter across the cheeks. It is such a pretty look. Okay, the sale, I did it, I did it. I did something I said I wasn't going to do. I purchased the Tom Ford Eye Color Quad Cream and I got the shade Smoky Quartz because I thought if I'm spending $89 plus on 20% off, I'm gonna get an eyeshadow palette that I'm gonna use a lot. So apparently these eyeshadows are very emollient. They mimic skin's ceramides, move with your skin, and all these types of things. And when I looked on like how to apply them, it was like use applicator. I'm not gonna be using these applicators. I do wanna touch them with my fingers and swatch. So this is smoky, smoky Quartz, it's kind of like a warm, oh. Why did I expect these to be kind of creamy? These are like, this feels like silk. I really didn't wanna like this, so I could return this. So all of these shades in, I wish I would've got that on camera, girl. This is just one little, let's try the darkest shade. Okay, can you guys see? I'm like barely pressing down. These feel like silk. I doubt this is picking up on camera. All of these are matte finishes. Again, I wanted to get one if I was gonna spend that much to get an eyeshadow quad that I would use a lot. So let's zoom in and get our first impressions of this baby. I'm gonna actually go ahead and go into this shade on my lid. I haven't purchased a Tom Ford eyeshadow quad in forever. So all I have on my eyes to prime them are that concealer and powder. Oh wow. Okay, right off the bat, feels very silky on my eyelid. I'm just using a Refer 02. If you would like to see the brushes that I usually use in my videos, I will have a link below to a full description of them and a breakdown of my top 10 that I constantly use. I mean, these are so silky, I can blend this in my crease with my finger. Oh my God. All of you who messaged me and commented about these, you were right. These are definitely a lot silkier. They feel creamy on the lid. They feel a lot silkier on the lid than the other Tom Ford eyeshadows, which I've owned a few of his eyeshadow quads before, and they were great eyeshadows. These, however, do feel different. Okay, really like no kick up. I'm gonna use a Refer 15. I just dipped that in the shade. 
And I'm gonna take this into the crease a little more. Oh my God, am I gonna have to keep this? I've been so bad recently and like there's like makeup that I just wanna hate, but apparently I can't. That's really pretty. It blends out really well. Let me know in the comments below, do you guys like when I do my hauls this way, like first impressions, or would you just rather see me list off the products that I get? I'm not sure this obviously, this version takes a lot more work. I just feel like it's a little more helpful when it comes to reviewing the products overall. Now I'm gonna take this shade right here on a with a Marc Jacobs crease brush, kind of like a loosier, goosier crease brush, so it kind of does the blending for you. Oh, that's nice. I wondered how this would do in the crease after applying that other shade and really kind of elevates it. Not to give the crease some kind of structured pop of color, I'm gonna go into this shade right here. We're just gonna run this on the outer part and kind of condense this shade. Everybody's gotta be proving something today. Kind of condense this shade, not blend it out too much. That's so pretty. I feel like I'm gonna be having a hard time putting this one down. I'm gonna go into this darkest shade here, keep my eye open, and this is how I do it. I really just keep my eye open and I start where my upper and lower lashes meet in a circular motion. And that kind of helps guide me where I want the shadow placement. And then I take it up and under. It's like that, that's what it looks like before it's blended. And now I'm just blending this out. Smoky city, girl. Why? I really like the, uh, style and shape of this smoky eye. It's very structured. I will say this, all of the eyeshadows are standing alone and they're not giving me trouble. I'm just gonna blend them out into my blush. Since we draped, you can do that. It looks nice, in my opinion. I feel like it gives up everything a really nice, seamless look. So pretty, we'll put this in the key pile for now. Okay, really quickly to just smoke out my eyes, I'm gonna do my little trick. I'm gonna use my Patrick Ta Gel Liner in Rich Brown. I'm just going to line the outer Vs of my waterline. And then I'm going to smudge that right into the Tom Ford shadows to just give me that little fake lift of a cat eye. Ooh. It kind of just lifts and gives you a nice snatched outer portion of your eye without having to wear a liquid liner. Okay, another product that I said I wouldn't get and I did, the Natasha Denona Pastel Palette. I did it and we're about to see. I know that we have a beautiful like neutral smoky look going on right now, but I feel like we have to at least swatch and try something. This looks like a palette. I probably won't use that much. Ooh, tool. Ooh, illusion. Look at her. So I feel like if you're gonna get a pastel palette, maybe have a palette full of colors that you'll use, you know, in conjunction with your other neutral palettes. Ooh, oh, that dainty shade though. Can you guys see that okay? That feels a little dry. Now, of course, this is an unofficial review. Well, that's a little dry feeling. I don't know how I feel about her. I'm obviously gonna have to use this eyeshadow palette in a different video to get a feel. I don't know, most of these just feel a little dusty other than the ones that we just tried. Ooh, Starlet's pretty. That is like a vibrant kind of pink. Oh, that's pretty. There's Starlet. Not the best swatches right now, but hey, we're having fun, right? I'm just gonna pop a little bit of bubble right here. Ooh, oh, that's a pretty like periwinkle blue here. I'm gonna pop a little bit of that into the inner corner. Use my color switch here, which is gonna be in an upcoming favorites video. I forgot how great it is, especially when you're doing multiple people's makeup at once. Oh my God, it's a lifesaver. So I'm gonna take bubble. I'm gonna take that on the Refer 12. And I'm going to, I feel like that would make it a fun look. And I'm just gonna press that into the inner corner here. 
Well, that might have actually just given me like dark circle vibes. Um, now I know it doesn't have like a bright base, but I've had blues like this before that have a little more color payoff. Okay, I feel like this gave me like an understated type of pop of color. I wish there was like a shimmery blue we could uh, brighten this up with. So I'm gonna go into this shade actually, airy right here. And I'm gonna press that right into the inner corner to liven it up. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, this is not too bad. When I step back and I look, I feel like it's giving me pretty uh, good understated blue vibes. Like it's still smoky. We're gonna put this palette away. I'm not sure, uh, let me know, I don't know. Maybe we'll try this again in a totally separate video. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a fully dedicated tutorial using this, we'll see. I'm sure there's other ones out there already. Okay, really quickly before we move on to any other application, I forgot to tell you guys, I also purchased the new Dior Forever Skin Glow 24 hour radiant foundation, perfection and hydration. This used to be one of my favorite foundations. Back in the day, they discontinued it, they reformulated it. I will not be trying this today. Obviously we use the Kosas, which girl, it's looking good, but you will be seeing a review from me. And uh, if you've been watching me for some while, this will be a little nostalgic for you. So I'm so excited to be trying this new reformulation, but more details to come in that video coming up. I'd love to know your thoughts already in the comments below if you've tried it. I have high hopes. I purchased the shade 25N, which I think will be my shade, but we'll find out in the next video. Last face product that I purchased was something from Danessa Merrick's. I have not purchased anything from this line. A lot of people love the products. This is her Dew Wet Balm Highlighting face and body balm. And the reason why I was excited is because I thought maybe this would be a lot like the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate on the illumination side. So I haven't tried it yet. It looks like it's just sheer with a little bit of pretty um, golden shimmer. I'm not a fan of the packaging. I'm a big packaging person. So if you're not, it shouldn't bother you. It doesn't uh, scream like higher end to me. This just feels like maybe something I'd see at the drugstore, but I wanna see how this is on the face. No weird scent. This is what it looks like on my finger. I'm a little worried about it kind of picking up on the rest of my foundation, but I'm gonna go in. It says you can use your finger or a beauty blender, beauty sponge. Well, that's pretty. So this is the only highlight we have on today. I bet it looks good on um, bare skin as well. Ooh, okay, so no side, Danessa Merrick's. The shimmer really isn't picking up, which is wonderful, cause like I said, trendy, trendy. We just want like wet looking skin. I would totally try this on my eyes, but I have a full day of work and I don't want it to break up my eye look. It's not breaking up the foundation. It's going over just really nicely. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on my nose. No weird scent. I, I could see this might become like a favorite of mine because I love dewy skin, especially since I have drier skin. Didn't even break up the powder because I powdered, you know, kind of right underneath my eyes. This is pretty. Let me know if you've tried this. Okay, despite the packaging, this might be a keep. I posted on my Instagram stories about the sale and how I was getting prepared and what I was putting on my wish list. And I found out Anastasia Beverly Hills launched new lip pencils and lipsticks. And my friend Emily from Instagram messaged me the shade uh, hazelnut that I need to get and uh, I already had warm peach in my cart. So let's try this out. Apparently these are incredible. 
I like the old school kind of angular uh, pencil here. This is the shade Hazelnut. That's really pretty. It looks a lot like Max Strip Down. Swatch Strip Down really quickly. Let me go find her. Okay, found Strip Down. Okay, so, so Hazelnut is a little bit more of a neutral lip liner shade. This is Strip Down, this is Hazelnut. Okay, this is smooth. It takes a lot for a lip liner to impress me, especially since I love my lip, uh, my M Cosmetics Velvet Lip Blur so much. Okay, this is gliding on almost like a lipstick. I don't know, I don't like the packaging. This is the new lipstick. This is this shade Warm Peach. This is in satin. I'm just not a fan of the grip here. I don't know, it reminds me of like ammunition. No weird scent, but Warm Peach just based off of swatches online really caught my attention. And I thought it would look good with Hazelnut. Okay, so this says satin formula. I'm getting more of a creamy feel. That's pretty. I do like that. It feels like, I don't know if you guys have tried these, but it feels like uh, the Dose of Colors lipsticks, but like a little less heavy. Those were super pretty, but really felt too heavy on the lips for me to wear all the time. Mm, warm peach is a nice nude. I'm gonna deepen it up a little bit with hazelnut. Okay, I really like this lip combo. It is very nude, but I feel like, okay, so I love warmer peach nudes and I feel like with a look like this, with the pop of blue, this might be like a really nice go-to for me this summer. No weird scent, I love that. I am not a fan of scented lip products because that's a product that you're gonna be applying the rest of the day and you will be smelling it. <laughs> also, the uh, Danessa Merrick's, it's my hair's kinda sticking to it. Ooh, it makes my teeth look really white too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. A lip gloss. This is the new Patrick Ta Plumping Lip gloss in the shade superficial major volume plumping gloss you guys know i love patrick ta products oh i woo, this is the first time me like actually seeing this in person it's got a nice like plump applicator i thought this would look good oh it smells oh my god it smells like the holidays you know what it smells like my grandma used to sell home interior and home interior home interior candles that's kind of what it smells like. It smells like it's gonna plump. I don't notice any stinging, but I have to say, I really like these three together. Uh-oh. Mm. Oh, there's a cooling effect right now. Well, that is everything that I hauled for this spring Sephora sale. I really wanted to go springy, lightweight products, products that I would use all the time. So let me know in the comments below what you picked up, what you're thinking about picking up. There's a few more hair products that are on my wish list. So I'll let you guys know if there's any updates or anything that I pick up, but let us know in the comments below what you have your eye on, what's in your cart. Let's make these comments shoppable. It helps everybody out and it makes it super fun. So don't forget to be on the lookout. I will be reviewing this foundation. I'll let you know in the blog portion of this video in the information below if there's anything else I decide to return. I'm definitely not returning this. Dude, I can like just spray this throughout the day and it doesn't build up too much and it just gives my hair, oh my God, that smell. I need to stop because I'm gonna start crying. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Will you be considering any of these products? I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, you guys. Watch this video or that video or both videos. And also, don't forget to subscribe so we can be friends forever. <laughs> All right.